and miss defense from the outset gave up a long drive to Pittsburgh. I mean Pittsburgh moved the football at the start of the game and then had that one big play. That's all the offense they had to show for Walt Harris in the first half. Well, I think that's right and I, and I think that Walt Harris is a little bit concerned that their passing attack has really been non-existent. If you take away the 89 yard touchdown pass on a broken play I mean there's only about 26 yards 27 yards of passing yardage for Pitt. Jeff Bauer not real happy that his team had some big penalties that helped that first Pittsburgh drive from the get go but he's got to be very proud of his quarterback Lee Roberts Roberts having an outstanding game so far and he's gotten some big plays from Gerard Gideon you take a look at the stats the quarterback comparison Gonzalez only six of 13 116 yards but Lee Roberts with the big first half that one interception he'd like to have back obviously that came deep in Pittsburgh territory. Eric Booth is back and it's the first time we've seen him back there Rod it's significant he led the nation in kickoff returns this year he took two back for scores and the Pittsburgh Panthers would like to kick it away from him because they gave up three kickoff return touchdowns this year and Booth is out of bounds at the 39 yard line. Down to the sidelines, Chris Marlowe. All right, that's except for the big play. And Rodney, you're right. He wants to run the ball more, particularly inside. Walt Harris said, hey, our defense hung in. That big play gave us some hope. I asked him, can you get the offense going with Gonzalez? He said, I hope so. Back to you. Harold Shaw trying to go up the middle. Nothing doing. Marlon Young, the junior out of Miami, made the stop. Ernest Coakley there as well. That's what Pitt is going to have to do. They need some gang tackling inside and shut down the Southern Miss running game because you have to believe they want to run the ball in the second half and wear down Pitt and eat up the clock. They also like to get probably one more score out of it and turn it over to their defense, which has been outstanding. Roberts has his man Harold Shaw the tailback across midfield first down to the 49 yard line and they they have used Shaw on that kind of a pass play all season long he had 26 catches coming into the season and he just takes a little screen pass here you'll see just a little circle route he comes right back underneath waits for his lineman there and then he just picks his way through a nice job of letting his lineman set it up for him and then he picks up the first down. Just inside Pittsburgh territory and Shaw brings it down to the 43 yard line. Well the nice thing for Southern Miss right now is that they gain yardage on first down and they're in that area of the field where they can try and isolate Gideon on someone and make a big play. I mean you sucker them into thinking run 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 and then you hit them with a big play and Gideon has delivered big plays already today. 52 yards for Shaw. Gideon at the bottom of your screen. And Roberts is changing the play. He wanted to get to Gideon, but Frank Moore got him first. Playing on one leg all season long. Well, you're absolutely right. He was able to get there to make the play, but it's because of the play of the outside linebacker. Kasparovic was able to get out and take away the throwing lane, and so Roberts couldn't throw the ball. He held the ball because he couldn't throw where he wanted to, and that allowed Moore to get in and make the tackle. That right knee brace is supporting a knee that does not have an ACL, or at least an intact one right now. He's played two months without it. On third down, Shaw, second effort gets him to the 42-yard line where Rod Humphrey finishes him off. He's short of the first down, and in a possible situation where maybe Jeff Bauer might think about going for it. I, I, don't, I really don't think you'd do that right now. 
I mean, with a 14-7 lead, you don't want to give Pitt any more momentum. I think you punt the ball, pin them down, and let your defense, which has been playing so well, get back out on the field. The punt team is just trying to get back out on the field right now. So Walt Harris's team will probably be getting this football deep in their own territory. Mercer's punt at the 15-yard line. John Jenkins makes the fair catch. Pittsburgh, who scored the final touchdown of the first half, gets their first crack in the seconds. <laughs> The AXA Equitable Liberty Bowl is presented by AXA and Equitable, a global powerhouse, a trusted friend, a formula for success, and in part by FedEx. Just what you want, just when you want it. With FedEx, it's the way the world works. I don't know. I, w I think Elvis will be pulling for the Conference USA member since Memphis is now in Conference USA. Billy West across the 15. Loose ball. Picked up. Perry Phoenix. Touchdown. Southern Miss with a big play defense all year. First time we've seen it today. Well, the defense has been playing big all afternoon. They finally get a turnover. That ball came out a little bit late, but Perry Phoenix, there was nothing late about the way he got into the end zone. He looked like a great running back on that play. The senior out of Dallas, Texas, a first team conference USA. -er. And the point is good. And Southern Miss off a Pittsburgh mistake has a 21-7 lead. Well, we told you at the top of the show that Pitt will be playing likely without Dwayne Schultz, who had the groin injury, but we thought he might play some. He doesn't get in the ball game. Here's West who gets in there. That ball comes out right away. It looked like it was just knocked out as he went into the line of scrimmage. Wasn't clear who knocked it out, but Perry Phoenix picked it up right away, broke a couple tackles, and that's just great effort by a man who's determined to get into the end zone. See if we can sell, tell from this angle. It looks like it was 97, Adelis Thomas, who made the fumble. He knocked it out, and his teammate Perry Phoenix was there to make the touchdown. Phoenix, a 15-yard recovery return. All right, he's all right. got to catch his breath because he's got to get back out there in a hurry. Doc, Monroe, Dallas, D Sound. It's me, baby. So Southern Miss capitalizes on the Pittsburgh turnover. Pittsburgh did not capitalize on their interception late in that first half. Hank Poteet is deep. Mike Mitchell will kick it away. Southern Miss is unorthodox in their defensive schemes and in their special teams. They have all yeah. kinds of great what, what formations. Is, what is all that? You got guys waving your arms and three guys standing together. That is an unusual kickoff formation, but they're having a lot of fun. at the five. Out to the 22-yard line. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. on ESPN, the Outback Bowl live from Tampa, number 11, Georgia, and Wisconsin, the Badgers and the Bulldogs. It's an early wake-up call for a big day of football. 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow on ESPN. Now Pittsburgh down 21-7. Gonzalez a quick throw. 
Hofort the catch to the 27 yard line. And Patrick Sertain is upset with himself because he went for the tackle. And he knows that he could have picked that ball off. He's in single coverage. Look at him right there. 15 right here. He's going to read this thing right now. Drive on it. He goes down low for the feet. If he had looked up, he'd have picked off that pass. That's why he was upset when that play ended. He's a great corner out of New Orleans, Louisiana, and will play in the NFL. Six picks this year. West to the 32-yard line. Number 20, Billy West. You know, Rich, the thing about Patrick Sertain is that when you have a corner like that, it's much like having a Deion Sanders. You can just wipe out that side of the field. You can't throw to the receiver that he's covering. It allows you to take 10 other guys and outnumber everybody else. That's how good he is. And he's having a huge day today. The Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year is showing you why this afternoon. West is hammered. Marchant Kenny. Well, wearing that brace doesn't seem to harm him at all. We told you in the first half about his bad shoulder, how he has it strapped down. He can't raise his arm above his head, but you don't need to when you can run up and hit somebody like that. Watch 43 show up in the middle of your screen. He's going to come just like he shot out of a cannon right there. Big hit in the backfield. Cofield, his first punt of the second half. And Sherrod Gideon. Fair catch at the 25-yard line. Good kick by Grant Cofield. 47 yards. Southern Miss on top in the AXA Equitable Liberty Bowl. We have it. And Pittsburgh. Those are the old helmets, apparently sail helmets, too. You got those, uh, you got one for yourself, too, right? In the bargain basement. Yeah. Those are the uh, helmets of Marino and Van Pelt, Dorsett. Lee Roberts to the air. Batted down. And your man Trey Clayton was on the spot again. Yeah, and Trey Clayton did a nice job that time. He was all over the receiver that time, and 15 John Jenkins came over to help him out. But just a real nice job by Trey Clayton on this coverage. There you see him, number seven, in coverage. He's working against Pinkston, number 80, and he reads the, the route to the corner, is all over it, and has nice help as well. That's great one-on-one -on -one coverage. Nice speed turn with the head. Creighton matched up right now with Sherrod Gideon. Harold Shaw bounced in the backfield. Flag goes down. Rod Humphrey at the bottom of the pile with Julian Graham. Yeah, but Jason Sobolewski was the one who made the play. And 97, Sobolewski turned the thing inside so that his teammates could come over and make the tackle. Holding on the offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. Walt Harris declines the penalty. It'll bring up third down and about 11. Arizona State 17-7 over Iowa. The Pac-10 is having a rather good bowl season. Yeah, making a claim for being the top conference with its bowl wins. I don't think they've lost one yet. Hardy in motion. Roberts running out of time. And he throws short. He was looking for Shaw. And Julian Graham again giving the pressure. Now Roberts had plenty of protection, but you see the zone coverage. Remember in the first half, they were playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. They don't have it here. They keep the safety in the hole. Linebackers drop into zone coverage. They cover every area. Nobody's open. Roberts finally dumps the ball off. A nice adjustment by Pittsburgh to get out of the man coverage that resulted in big touchdown plays in the first half. John Jenkins is deep. Pitt has yet to return a punt. All three punts by Purser have been fair caught. This one will be returned. Now 
to the 37 yard line. Rod, we saw those old pit helmets, and many times you think of those great Panther teams, you think offense with Dorsett and Marino. And you do. You think offense. Right. I think defense. Here's your guy then. Your guy was a great, outstanding defensive lineman for the Pittsburgh Panthers. That would be Hugh Green. Yeah, yeah, he could play, couldn't he? Hugh Green finished second in the Heisman Trophy balloting back in 1980 and was like Lawrence Taylor, could disrupt the game all by himself. One of the legends at Pitt. You know, I heard a, a quote from Hugh Green about a week before the Heisman Trophy was announced saying, I hope that maybe I've paved the way for someone like Charles Woodson to win the Heisman. And he did. Hopefully Charles has called him and said, thanks, Hugh. Pete Gonzalez, nice catch, Hofer to the 46-yard line. Go back to 1980. Name that Heisman Trophy winner, 1980. George Rogers. <laughs> I cheated. Herschel Walker. Mark Herman came in a distant fourth. It was a 77 team that was a national championship team for the Panthers. They beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. And they were coached by... Johnny Majors, who was having breakfast a couple tables away from us this morning. He's here with this Panther contingent. Gonzalez, a scramble. He's got, well, it looked like he was about to get the first down, but his quick slide stopped him at the 48. Well, he got hit, too. <laughs> he may not have gotten the first down, but he took a big hit there. And Southern Miss is known for taking shots. I mean, really playing good, hard football. And Marshawn Kenny is one of those guys. Gonzalez understands now, when you come into that man's area, you better get down. First down, Pittsburgh. You know, you mentioned Johnny Majors. One of the interesting things is that, you know, he and Walt Harris go back a ways when, when uh, Harris was an assistant coach at Tennessee with him, and they're good friends, and he's really helped him in this program here. Majors, of course, came back for his second stay at Pittsburgh, and it was obviously not as successful as his first run. Billy West in motion. Corner blitz. And a screen that bounces and is picked up and blown incomplete. And a flag, a couple of flags are down right now. But you know, that man right there, John Thompson, defensive coordinator, believes in putting pressure on the quarterback and the offensive lineman. Speed can disrupt an offense. And that's exactly what Southern Miss has done to Pitt today. Illegal touching by an eligible lineman. Five yards, loss of down. Second down. The pass hit one of the Panther linemen. It's a five-yard penalty, loss of down. And John Thompson told us yesterday that he would have guys all over the place. Watch the end of this play here. Speed again, disrupting what they want to do. And the ball hits a lineman. Hit him right in the back. And they called that the illegal touching. Tony Orlandini is a first team all Big East tackle. Not a receiver. He was looking for Kevin Barlow. Second down 15. Over the middle, Hofford dives. Does he get it? No. Incomplete. And that would have been a big catch. They need a momentum changer. You may remember that Hofer came up with a big catch in the last game that Pitt had to win to get here on a fourth down. They got it done. This time he can't quite come up with it. Ball is a little bit out in front of him, and it looked like he had it from that angle, but you can see that he lost the ball. He didn't have control of it from the other angle. See? Never had control over it. Good work by this officiating crew. It was the back judge that had the definitive look. And not a bad job by our cameraman either. Nice angle. Third down again for Pittsburgh, just 4 of 11 today. Here comes the blitz. And there goes Gonzalez. Adelius Thomas. Second sack of the Pittsburgh quarterback. Well, you know, John Thomas has, Thompson has thrown everything at them today. I mean, I don't believe they've been in zone coverage one time. There's been a blitz on all the time. The question is, where is it coming from? And Gonzalez has had trouble figuring out where it's coming from. The speed, the quickness is too much, and that man right there is going to keep sending guys after Gonzalez.
Gideon with the fair catch at the 21 yard line. 38 yards on the kick. Southern Miss in control in the Liberty Bowl. So far for Southern Miss, they clinched the Conference USA Championship here, and they're on top of Walt Harris's Pittsburgh Panthers, 21-7. They're on 21 yard line. Jim Kitchen, the man in motion. Option look, haven't seen much of this. Shaw has a five yard pickup. Curtis McGee made the stop. Down to the sidelines, Chris Marlowe. All right, standing by with the vice chairman of AXA and the equitable companies, Henri Dacoste. You flew all night from Paris to get here. Are you enjoying the game? Yes, absolutely. I think it's a wonderful afternoon. And, and I mean, we are in winter, but, but with the game, it's like in summer. Are you a football fan? I am a football fan. I know rugby better, but I like football very much. AXA and the equitable companies. Why did you become involved with the Liberty Bowl? Because we wanted to have the AXA and equitable brands better known in the U.S. And we wanted to find an event where we could support a useful thing. And we think that this bowl is a wonderful occasion for us to support values we are uh, exercising in our business life. Team spirit, uh, good execution, sense of strategy. But also we wanted to help St. Jude's and all the children there because we think the hospital is doing a wonderful job there. Well, so far it's looked good. You've got a big crowd, national television. Are you enjoying the game? Absolutely. I think it's a wonderful afternoon. Rooting for anybody? <laughs> well, I think both teams are excellent and the game is not over. <laughs> very diplomatic. Thank you very much for joining us and have a good uh, good flight back to Paris. Thank you very much. Goodbye. I'm Ray Dacos. Thanks, Chris. Lee Roberts over the middle. Got his man, Gideon. He's been the guy all day. Trey Creighton on the stop. And what he does with the ball after the catch is great. I mean, hard nose running, trying to pick up the yardage. This guy runs into the middle. You want your receiver to catch the ball over the middle. Watch him right now. He knows that's a dangerous area, and now he takes off. That's a tough, hard nosed receiver. He's showing you the full package today, Rich. Two touchdown catches in the first half. Robert's going to throw it again. Flags down, as is Roberts. And it looks like a hold on Southern Miss. Jeff McCurley, the freshman out of Enon Valley, Pennsylvania, made the stop. You mentioned earlier how Jeff Bauer made the tough decision to change his offense. Did a lot of soul searching about that. He felt that last year he had a great defense, but that they didn't run the ball well enough to give themselves a chance to be the best team they could be. So what did he do? He scrapped the offense at the end of the season after thinking about it long and hard and went to the one back set. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot of the foul, repeat first down. And what that resulted in, changing the offense, was a quarterback who threw for more than 2,000 yards, a receiver that caught more than 1,000 yards, and then a running back who ran for more than 1,000 yards. And that never happened before at Southern Miss. Southern Miss with big plays, lots of them today. Pittsburgh, remember that 189-yard touchdown pass from Gonzalez to Hofer. That stands out as Pittsburgh's only big play. Shaw back up to the 44 yard line that was a first down and 25 Julian Graham made the stop it's worth noting too when you talk about Southern Miss and what they've accomplished two straight eight and three seasons it's not easy to go eight and three as Southern Miss normally Rod they get only four home games they have a difficult time scheduling out of their conference and that's because they need to schedule away games to raise money for their athletic department, so they play seven games on the road a year. The officials stop play right now. I think Pittsburgh may have called the timeout. A little over four minutes left in the third quarter. Southern Miss on top. For a long time, Jeff Bauer has been associated 
with Southern Miss. Go back to 1975. You know what the record was in 75, Rod? Eight and three. And he looks a little bit like Burt Jones, remember? <laughs> yeah. No quarterback. This year, eight and three. Last year, eight and three. All the losses on the road against SEC teams, Florida, Alabama, and Tennessee. And they played Florida tough. Lost 21-6 to open the season at Florida. Hooking up again, Lee Roberts and Terry Hardy, the tight ends. Still short of the first down, but he's back into Pittsburgh territory. Well, the thing that's nice about it is that Roberts is a quick study. He knows his tight end is coming from left to right, and he waits for him to spot up over there. Finds him in front of the linebackers again. When he's getting pressure, he is still a cool customer. He doesn't panic. He had the pressure coming that time. He did not panic. Rod Humphrey, 51, applying the pressure. Lee Roberts, incomplete, a stumbling Todd Pinkston got a hand on it. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that Southern Miss is throwing the ball as much as as they have been in the second half. I thought they wanted to, to run the ball a bit more, but they haven't been very successful with their drives in the second half. Their only points in the second half, a defensive play. Perry Phoenix scooping up a fumble and racing 15 yards for a touchdown. Jamie Purser back into punt. into the end zone. It's a touchback. Somewhere in this Liberty Bowl sits Chris Marlowe. Chris? Well, the weather's a factor now. Temperature 41 at game time. It's gone down into the 30s, and people are bundled up. It is cold. How cold is it? Freezing. Freezing. Send me down Rodney's hat right now. <laughs> Can't have it. Where is you it? You cannot Where have my it? hat. Give it to me. I got it. I can't fit it on over my head, Zip, but my hat's with me, Chris. <laughs> I'll bet if I threw this thing, like that James Bond film. No, no, villain, no, 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 no. Who, who was it? That odd job. The, the guy in James know, Bond. But, but this, hat? this hat you don't throw. This is one for win. <laughs> or at least send him the scarf. Pittsburgh right back to work. Terry Murphy with the catch. Perry Phoenix with the tackle. And, and that's a great call. I mean, Gonzalez has been on the bench. He hasn't gotten anything done. Come on out and let him throw a pass that he's really comfortable with and try to get him on track. Nine of 17 for 139 yards. 89 coming on that broken play for a touchdown. Second and one. Again, Hofer couldn't hold it. And maybe the cold affecting him. He had that 89-yard touchdown. Uh, 64 times he came up with catches this past season, and I can guarantee you he will not drop many, but he'd like to have this one back because it was right on the money. Right there. And you need your receivers to make some tough catches for you from time to time to get your offense going. What looked like an easy second and one has turned into third and one. And that's not been easy for Pittsburgh today. Four and 12. Blitz coming. Gonzalez fires it in there. Tumbling catch by Juan Williams. He had just 10 catches this year, Juan Williams has. They've thrown to him quite a lot. Well, they've had to change. You know, they had the time off to try and make some things happen. They've gone to giving the ball to the fullback more, throwing to the tight end. But the other thing is that they've had things taken away from them by the Southern Miss defense. So you need your tight end more because the wide receivers have been eliminated. Walt Harris and his precision passing game has been thrown off by the speed and quickness. Now you can see 10 catches, three touchdowns, though. He's been a target today. To Quincy Scott making the stop on Kevin Barlow. 
this one for Pittsburgh, number 43, Kevin Barley. And Scott was very slow getting up. You see him, he tried to get up and limp off, but he just went right back down. It looked like it was the right leg that he was favoring. He's a freshman. Let's see if we can find where De Quincey Scott was tangled up. Well, he was in the middle of that play making the tackle. And it looks like he really just sort of does it to himself and spinning around making that tackle. He pulled the running back, Kevin Barlow, number 43, down on him on top of himself. Let's see if we can tell from this angle whether he gets that right foot caught underneath himself. Yeah, there it is. Got that right foot underneath, and Barlow fell right on top of the knee there. Friday at 1 o'clock on ESPN. Big Ten college basketball coming your way. Number five, Purdue against Clem Haskins Golden Gophers of Minnesota. 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific. It's Friday as the conference basketball seasons are getting underway. Oh, that Big Ten conference race. Every, every year, it's a war, isn't it? Every year. The moon has arrived, making its second half entrance above Memphis. A lot of things to do in Memphis. I'm sure you will do some of them. Game clock <laughs> right now is malfunctioning, we're told. Hey, Happy New Year's. Not yet. It's close. Not yet. Maybe we'll go to Graceland or, or watch the Ducks walk around. Have you seen the Ducks? No, but I've seen the Ducks home. I was on top of the Peabody Hotel yesterday with you, and the Ducks were, were hiding. It was a little too cold for the Ducks, I think, on top <laughs> of the Peabody. They were down in the pond down below. Apparently, the official wants your hat as well, Rodney. Well, it's so cold that the game clock is now having a problem. You saw that hairdo from Jeff Bauer. There was a guy that Bauer worked with at Southern Miss that has gone on to have a decent career. Brett Favre, quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. Tongue firmly in cheek. Yeah, yeah, nice, uh, nice hairdo there. I'll tell you one thing, Brett Favre has remained very much involved with the Southern Miss program. Sure, he spends his summers in Hattiesburg. He still is a, in contact with Jeff Bauer. They talk a lot. Favre was planning to come to this football game, but He's got other matters to tend to. There's something about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now the clock is fixed, but not the Pittsburgh offense. Tremendous diving interception. Terrence Parrish. They may wave it off, although Parrish is just learning that. You know, sometimes when you have a great corner on one side of the field, it raises the level of play of the other corner. And that's because you get challenged a lot. And Parrish makes a great effort here, but maybe he didn't quite come up with this thing. He sold me on it. Well, he lays out for it. That's a great effort. Catches the backside of the ball, but oh. he gets a little bit of help from the ground. Oh. You see how he smashed it against the ground, though? Oh. You got to have your hands underneath the ball to get the call. Third down, 10. Southern Miss showing blitz and flags hit the deck. Movement up front. Dead ball. Full start on the offense. Five yards. Still third down. Rod, you mentioned the passing efficiency of, of Pittsburgh. That Southern Miss defense, John Thompson, on the far left, the defensive corner. There yeah, he is, right, right there, right in the middle. He has seen some of the best passing offenses this year. He's faced Nevada, number one, Tennessee, number six, Louisville, number nine, Florida, number 15. His passing defense ranked 11th in the nation. And he doesn't mind having a challenge. He's got the speed and quickness to get after guys. 
They've been after Pete Gonzalez all day. And they almost got another pick. Well, I'd venture to say that Pete Gonzalez has not seen a defense with this much speed all season long. And you see that it's really disrupting the flow and the rhythm of this offense. Patrick Sertain making another play. Yeah, see, you know, now they drop into a zone. They've been blitzing most of the day. They drop into the zone, and Gonzalez has to recognize that, and he doesn't quite pick up all the coverage, and they're driving on the ball. That speed and quickness, they are all over the field right now. Gideon should get another touch on this return. To the 39-yard line. Returning on Friday, January 16th, Rod Gilmore, don't miss this. X Games, you've got ice climbers, you've got snowboarders, six riders in Border X, Snowcross and Skier X, not related to Racer X. The Winter X Games starting January 16th on ESPN and ESPN2. Hungry goes, the more and more we're gonna get throws now. So let's prowl and steal, better ball get off. You got it going right now. More chance to trail get a pick. Yeah, let's go. That pass incomplete, you could hear John Thompson <laughs> talking through it. Sherrod Gideon unable to make the catch. Let's shut them down in the fourth quarter. They doubled everything. All their scores have been in the fourth quarter. Let's go now. You heard John Thompson preaching to them about the character of Pitt, how they score their points in the fourth quarter. And he's encouraging his guys to look for the passes and to be ready because Pitt will come back after them in the fourth quarter. Terry Hardy in motion. Eric Booth. He's loose. Inside the 20. Booth to the 29-yard line. Well, you talked about Eric Booth and what he does on kickoff returns, but that same speed is a factor when he gets the ball in the backfield. Watch him head off the left side. He's going to get a good block by his left tackle. Going to be a nice job over there, and he gets right in behind and finds the crease. Pitt trying to get up close and take away the run and bring their linebackers became vulnerable to a quick hitting play outside like that. He had 119 yards against Houston. Booth again, this time tripped up. Ernest Coakley made the stop. Very important for Pitt to keep Southern Miss out of the end zone right now. Giving up a third, a fourth touchdown right here would really be very difficult to overcome in the fourth quarter. They need to hold, hold them to at least a field goal. Kingston in motion. Roberts, Gideon to the four. You know, what, made the stop. What courage. And the other thing is that Roberts helps him out by throwing the ball quickly and right to the hash mark. He throws it low. He doesn't hang his receiver up to take a big hit. This post pattern is thrown very quickly to make sure that Gideon has a nice shot right there. See that? It's right in front of the hash. He doesn't lead him to the safety where he can take a big hit. Nice job by the quarterback. 14 yards on the completion. For Gideon. Yes! Yeah. Touchdown! He got that. The officials paused for a brief moment. His third of the day, a new Liberty Bowl record. It's just a simple fade route, and when you run a fade route, you want to give your quarterback enough room to drop the ball in. And Gideon does, does just that, stutter step. That gives him room to make the leverage outside, and what a tremendous effort to keep his foot in bounds while making the grab. Three touchdown catches today. He had nine 
on the season a Liberty Bowl record. The extra point is good barely six catches 83 yards three touchdowns not a bad day's work for Sherrod Gideon and Southern Miss is in control in the Liberty Bowl. Twister, but he needs a left foot green in a bad way here. Yeah, now watch it. Left foot right there. That left foot is down. He guys catches the ball. They signal touchdown. Very quickly done. The right foot comes in out of bounds. I know you think that that's bad, but in college football, one foot down when you have possession, it's a touchdown. You know, in reality, Rod, as we watch these super slow mo looks, how in the world? There you have it. Yeah, good call, Mr. Gilmore, and great call by the this ACC officiating crew. I mean, when you have to slow something down, look at it three times, and still you're kind of, oh, I don't know. I mean, how can an official make a definitive call? You got to do your best shot, and I think the officials got it right. Well, you had to slow it down. Oh. <laughs> I may throw that hat out yet. Out to the 34-yard line. Flag down at the 20. Sherrod Gideon's had a big ball game. Yeah, paint his name in the end zone. He got it going early with a touchdown pass in the first quarter. Put him up 7-0. Got another one in the first half to make it 14-zip. And how about this one to finish things off? A big play setting up his last touchdown reception, which is right here with the one foot in. His third touchdown catch of the day. Block in the back, above the waist, on the return, 10 yards, spot of the foul, first down. Six catches, 83 yards. Batting 500 as far as the touchdowns go, three out of six for scores. And that combination will be back next year. Lee Roberts, Sherrod Gideon. Roberts a junior, Gideon just a sophomore. Remember John Thompson, the defensive coordinator for Southern Miss, lecturing his team about Pittsburgh in the fourth quarter. Well, the Panthers have got a long ways to go here in this fourth quarter. Another catch for Juan Williams. And he's bounced out of bounds. We bounce down to the sidelines. Chris Marlowe. All right, one of the more innovative signs in the house. Eagles should be playing Nebraska. What does that say about poor Tennessee? Tennessee never gets any respect. Back to you. <laughs> you know, that's an appropriate sign, Rod Gilmore, because they will be playing Nebraska. I think it's in the year 2000 or 2001. They've got a two-for-one game, two games at Nebraska, and Nebraska will actually go down and play them. You take a look at the average field position, 41-yard line for Southern Miss. What I like about Bauer is that he will play anybody, anywhere, anytime. Hofford the catch, he's got the first down, and Pittsburgh trying to dig themselves out of their own territory. I'll tell you what, Southern Miss is a fun team to watch, too, because they have a nice, exciting offense, and their defense is exciting as well. They fly around, they play aggressive football. They're a tough team. That's a squad that has never finished the season ranked in the top 25. I think that'll happen for them this season. Interstate rivals have kind of dried up because Ole Miss and Mississippi State do not appear on the Southern Miss schedule. And that's not Southern Miss's doing. Almost a nice catch. Terry Murphy just mistimed his jump. I think you're right, Rich. You know, Southern Miss would love to play Mississippi State and Ole Miss. And they were hoping to get a chance to play them in this game here, but that didn't happen. And you can see why it may be that Ole Miss and Mississippi State don't particularly like to play Southern Miss. Southern Miss has dominated those two rivalries as you look back over the last seven games against Ole Miss and the last 15 against Mississippi State. Conference USA, obviously a very young conference, just its second year with football. And boy, was it a savior for the Southern Miss program because now they can compete for a conference championship. They had a share of it last year, outright this year. Gonzalez's throw is high and it's incomplete. And it will bring up third down and 10. Well, Gonzalez is having a tough afternoon, and that's not 
there's nothing bad about that. He's facing a great defense, but this man has had a tremendous season. When you think about what he's done this year, it's utterly outstanding. 12 of 26 today, but this man has thrown 345 passes his senior year after throwing only 150 in the four previous seasons. have been tough to come by. They're 5 of 13. Gonzalez's his throw. It's picked off. Adelius Thomas. Thomas, he's in. Touchdown. The fourth quarter heroics tonight belong to Southern Miss. Remember John Thompson telling his troops, Go ahead, play hard in the fourth quarter, look for the picks, understand that Pitt will try and double things in the fourth quarter. He's got to be proud of the way his defensive squad has played this entire afternoon and early evening. And the Golden Eagles will try to stretch it to 35-7. Adelius Thomas, second touchdown by the Southern Miss defense today. Perry Phoenix brought a fumble back as well. Flags down before the kick left the toe. Offsides on the defense, half the distance to the goal. Repeat the try. So Tim Hardaway will kick it again. Drills that one. Well, there you see the play. It was just a poor throw by Gonzalez. Didn't have much on it. Just kind of lay, lays it out there. And Thomas does a nice job of using those hands. And you don't expect linebackers or linemen to be able to catch a ball out of the air with hands like that. But Thomas did it. 26 yards on the return. And Southern Miss has stretched it even further. The extra equitable Liberty Ball with Southern Miss on top. The AXA Equitable Liberty Bowl is presented by AXA and Equitable, a global powerhouse, a trusted friend, a formula for success, and in part by Quality Care Service at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers. Jeff Bauer trying to win his first bowl game. It would not be the first one he coached. He coached that All-American Bowl. And there's his wife, Debbie. What a excruciating year it has been for that family. You know, we, we touched on the, the death of Kristen Bauer at 17 years of age in an auto accident, third week of the season. But the Southern Miss program also lost a player in March, Larry Norton, a former tight end in March of this year was killed as well in an auto accident. It's been a very difficult year for Bauer and the Southern Miss program with all those tragedies. You know, Rich, I'm just struck by, it's just not fair, you know. Children should not die before their parents. They'll kick it in midfield. There was a roughing the kicker, a personal foul on an extra point is assessed on the kickoff. Hank Poteet waits for this kick. Angled towards the sideline. Fumbled and then held. And Pittsburgh will have awful field position. Andy Molinaro on the return. They'll mark it at the 13 yard line. Their own 13 yard line has the ball for Fourteen points off the two takeaways, the Perry Phoenix fumble return and the Adelius Thomas interception return. 
people take away is that's the one statistical category that coaches will tell you is the most meaningful in football. Billy West out to the 25-yard line. Marshank Kinney made the stop. Billy West ran for over 1,000 yards a couple of seasons ago, was a backup to Curtis Martin before Martin moved on to the NFL. West lost a starting job after breaking his leg and not recovering from that very quickly, but has been the starter tonight because Dwayne Schulter has not been able to play due to a groin injury. West again. Let's go to the sidelines and find Chris Marlowe. Chris? You know something, Adarius Thomas is a very valuable athlete to Southern Mississippi. Not only is he a great outside linebacker, but in a couple of weeks, he'll be joining the Southern Miss basketball team. He is listed as a small forward at 6'2", 250. He's definitely the enforcer. Let's go back to you. <laughs> small? <laughs> That's why he has those soft hands and he can pluck the ball out of the air. Second and six for Pittsburgh. Barlow still on his feet. And he's out to the 43-yard line. And John Thompson's going to get all over his defense. And he's not happy because they're starting to get a little sloppy. They missed some tackles. They weren't flying around. And I'm sure he's yelling at his troops, telling him he wants them to play with the same enthusiasm as they played up until this point. Now, Gonzalez does the right thing here. He wants to throw to the post, but it's not open. So he dumps the ball off. Now, watch the end. You haven't seen missed tackles until now. Until now, they've been playing great defense. They have like three or four missed tackles on that play, and Thompson just jumps all over his squad. He wasn't happy about that. So it's first and 10, and it's Barlow again. Out to the 47-yard line, Cedric Scott made the stop. Barlow's a true freshman out of Brooklyn. They expect him to carry the load quite a bit in the future. Thompson doesn't want Barlow going anywhere right now. He wants his defense to continue to play hard. Marshant Kenny playing with that shoulder brace and a banged up knee. He's also playing with one of those neck rolls back there. You see that? Gonzalez's throw hit as he threw and it's intercepted. Terrence Parrish and Terrence Parrish has got lots of green in front of him. He's going to make it. The third defensive touchdown by the Golden Eagles tonight. 63 yards, Terrence Parrish. Well, they played great defense in the first half, and in the second half, they played even better, converting things into touchdowns. But watch the hit that Gonzalez was taking. He was receiving a big hit as he was trying to throw that ball, and it just floated out there, and Parrish takes advantage of it. Now watch the end. Gonzalez gets up and tries to come over and make the play, but he just can't handle Parrish at the end with the old stiff arm. That's right. As a defensive back, you can't let a quarterback tackle you. Absolutely not. That extra point goes awry. But Southern Miss still satisfied with a 41-7 lead. John Thompson's defense, three touchdowns of their own tonight. Beale Street. Downtown Memphis. Cross town here at the Liberty Bowl. It's all Southern Miss. Might be a few Golden Eagle fans down on Beale Street tonight. I would expect so. Southern Miss, champions of Conference USA, would run their record to nine and three. 
they've done it with a mixture of big plays on offense and here in the second half defense what did you say <laughs> defense huh every now and then seven miss came up big with the scoring plays just don't find too many occasions when a defense puts up three scores in one ball game in one half almost in one quarter Hank Poteet to midfield. And Pittsburgh will get the football. Good field position, but they've got a long ways to go. Our storyline, Pittsburgh, just four plays over 10 yards and having trouble moving it on the ground. Lee Roberts, Sharad Gideon, they've hooked up three times. And here in the second half, three defensive touchdowns. Terrence Parrish on interception return, Adelius Thomas an interception return Harry Phoenix a fumble return and that 2.76 yards per carry is key because I think Pitt felt they could run the ball coming into the game they weren't able to at all Barlow inside the 40 and Barlow is loose and a nice run by Kevin Barlow they are really high on this youngster with good reason he's a big guy he can run through tackles, as he did on that play. He goes at about 215, 220 pounds, over six feet tall. He's a power back with speed. That's a nice combination. Watch how many guys miss him on this play. He runs through arm tackles, and he can do it. A little shake there, runs through that arm tackle, and watch here. He'll make another one. He'll get through that one right there. He's a big, strong back with a great future. Longest run of the day for Pittsburgh. And we've got a new man at the helm, Ben Lytle, the junior. And so Pete Gonzalez's day might just be done. Tony Thompson, the fullback, to the 15 yard line. In talking to Walt Harris a couple days ago, you got the sense that Pittsburgh at, at six and five and four and three was still I mean, I mean he said yeah we've turned it around we've turned it around but we haven't rebuilt it yet no he, he knows that they've changed the attitude here at Pitt they had grown accustomed to the losing seasons that's no longer the case they demand winning seasons now to the 16 yard line Barlow again you see what Pete Gonzalez has done today, 13 of 29. Look at the end, though. The two interceptions, those have been real keys to what's happened in the second half today. I guess the point that he was making is you could turn the attitude around, but that's just the very start of it. To turn the program around, a lot of other things have to fall in place. Got to have facilities constructed. You got to get recruiting going perennially. When that happens, then you have the program where it needs to be. Lytle's throw drops. Terry Murphy, the receiver. Well, Murphy hasn't gotten a lot of attention today. This ball was right there. We've seen two drops this half by the pit receivers. And that's one that you just don't normally find. That man made a big catch in their last ball game in the overtime to give them the win over West Virginia to get them into this ball game. And that's part of turning the attitude around, winning some games. Lytle slow, this time Murphy couldn't handle an outside fastball. Yeah, but that one's not his fault. That one was thrown behind him. And on fourth down and eight, that incompletion means that Southern Miss will get the ball. With nine minutes left in this Liberty Bowl. Well, you can't do this, though. He's signing autographs. <laughs> you can't do that. Game's not over yet. He better not have a coach see him do that. <laughs> There's a ball game going on. Well, whatever makes the fans happy. They sold over 50,000 tickets to this game. We had a good crowd on a cold day in Memphis. 
Lee Roberts still at the helm for Southern Miss. Eric Booth. Out to the 18-yard line. Brian, you made a mention earlier. We saw that final with Arizona State beating Iowa. The Pac-10 is undefeated in Bulls. Conference USA would go to 2-0. Cincinnati has won. The SEC right now is 2-0. A lot of their games are coming up. Of course, they had LSU a winner, and Ole Miss was a winner. Not surprising to see that Conference USA does well in the bowl games. That conference is just starting to, to mature, and you'll see more and more of that sort of thing as time goes on. Eric Booth, out to the 17-yard line. Certainly there's another big Pac-10 game on the horizon tomorrow. Washington State, Michigan. Oh, and you're, you weren't talking about the Bruins, huh? <laughs> no slight to Bob Toledo at UCLA. Not at all. He did a tremendous job with the, with the Bruins, especially after that rough start they had. Michigan and Washington State, of course. 41-7 here. The pitch to Booth. Caught from behind, Ron Humphrey made the stop. What do you bet that when that play was called, Lee Roberts said, I'm pitching that thing right away. There's absolutely no way I'm going to run an option when we're up 41-7 to and I throw him three touchdown passes. In talking to Jeff Bauer about Roberts, he made a comparison to Brett Favre in terms of toughness for Roberts. There were some games early on that where he was taking a beating. Florida was was pounded on him pretty good and Bauer took him out of the ballgame and told him look you don't need to prove to me you're a tough guy I know you are well his toughness was playing in his first game as a collegiate his first start he completed 13 passes in a row Southern Miss I'm not sure if they had enough on to punt not that it really mattered but they're going to call a timeout nonetheless 6.42 left in the AXA Equitable Liberty Bowl, and that man is on his way to a bowl win. They've done everything else tonight with relative ease. However, on this occasion, not enough guys were out on the field. Purser will punt it. John Jenkins out of bounds. Offense in the first half, the story for Southern Miss. Defense in the second half has been the story for the Golden Eagle. If Terrence Parrish gets it going here, sorry, it's Perry Phoenix, the one who picks up this ball, takes it into the end zone, fumble recovery for a touchdown. But Dalius Thomas then picked one off and walked by Pete Gonzalez. Terrence Parrish who did it here with this pickoff and watch the stiff arm here that he's going to give Gonzalez at the end to get into the end zone. Just a big play plays him right and says now just get off me with this stiff arm off me. Big play. It's as good a Heisman pose as you'll see. <laughs> you had to freeze it though. John Thompson watching his defense. Who had a tremendous year in Conference USA play well here tonight. Ben Lytle going deep. And it's incomplete. Terry Murphy selling out. Down to the sidelines, Chris Marlowe. Chris? All right, a couple of minutes ago, you saw Southern Mississippi with only 10 men on the field. You know, Pittsburgh has a better idea. They have something called the launching pad. And this is 10 dots that the special teams players actually stand on. The captain of the unit then says, once he's got all 10 guys, we got 11, let's get out there. And that's the way you make sure you don't go out with 12 or you don't have 10. You use the launching pad. Back to you. <laughs> Problem is, if you have one guy on the field or two guys on the field, the launching pad can be somewhat empty from time to time. You gotta clear the landing pad. Yeah. Incomplete. Barlow couldn't hold it. Coming up after this Liberty Bowl Sports Center, Marv Levy announcing his retirement today. Reports from both the Orange Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and the Sun Bowl recap. We'll show you some pictures from. Iowa and Arizona State 
Sports Center next. What a great career Mar, Le Mar Levy had with the Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs, tremendous coach. Lytle fires it over the middle and it's incomplete. Ramel Johnson couldn't hold on and it's fourth down and ten. But with all the drop passes by Pitt in the second half, you can see that the concentration has just left that team. Usually that's when you drop passes, you're thinking about doing something else, and we've seen three different guys drop passes in the second half. Pitt passing 13 of 34 for 172 yards, 21 incompleted passes. And a fair catch at the 17-yard line. Six minutes left in the Liberty Bowl. We'll show you the, those six minutes when we get back. Once we're done with the Liberty Bowl. Ben Lytle, the quarterback, or excuse me, it's Brian Belazic, the quarterback for Southern Miss. As the Golden Eagles put the finishing touches on a convincing Liberty Bowl win. And a long night for the Panthers. Andy Molinaro with a sore ankle getting some ice on. Kelby Nance, a freshman, a local kid, Hattiesburg. The carry. Brian Jacobs made the stop. You know, Rich, it, it, it has to be noted what a great job Walt Harris did with Pitt this year in only his first year. Got the program back on a winning track. And everyone's convinced that he is absolutely the right man for Pitt and he has him headed in the right direction. Third down and one. Nance again. Oh, there's a good stiff arm. Flag down. And Nance eventually goes down. We'll sort out the penalty. Well, the Panthers obviously surprising everybody in the Big East. All sides on the defense. Penalty is declined. So fast, my friends. We won. We the man. We beat the boys from up north. Don't come down south anymore. Not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, you got to be careful though because coach will have the last word. Coach always has the last word. <laughs> Southern Miss. We'll give it right back to the big man, Nance. And he's run out of bounds at the 35 yard line. We may hear from the coach coming up on Sports Center. It's immediately following this Liberty Bowl. Maybe the coach can answer the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Coach has an answer for everything. In a three yard, second down and seven. I tell you one thing, he likes the way Southern Miss plays defense. That man does too. He knew he had a great defense last year. Wanted to get his offense improved this season. Got it done. Eight and three and now looking at a Liberty Bowl victory. Out to the 37 yard line. Belazic, a, a freshman out of Homewood, Alabama. I told you that Lee Roberts will be back next year. It's young and it's deep and it's very good, the Southern Miss team. When they have a style of play and the coaching staff has been together now for a while on the defensive side of the ball, they'll continue to play that style of defensive football. And the more time they spend with this offense, the better they'll become. You talk about building a program with Walt Harris in Pittsburgh. Well, Jeff Bowers had to do that at Southern Miss. Belazic's going to go deep. 
And it's incomplete. One thing the success has meant to Bauer and the folks in Hattiesburg the last two, eight and three years, a share of a title last year, the Conference USA title this year, improved facilities. As you look at the headset of Bauer, the KB on the side of his hat. Yeah, right there. There it is. The initials for his daughter, Kristen Bauer, who told her father she couldn't wait to get to Memphis. It's as Bauer told us yesterday, he does not look forward to the end of this game. Twenty six yard line. That's where Pitt will get it going. You know, these two teams have met before the last time. Johnny Majors first game back. And for Johnny Majors, a triumphant return back, though his second stay in Pittsburgh not nearly as successful as the first. 10 Southern Miss players, eight Pitt players were on the roster. That was their first collegiate game. And they'll end it the way they started it. And one of the players you saw in that clip was Curtis Martin, who played at Pitt before moving on to the NFL and the New England Patriots. It's a program that, as we talked about at the outset of the telecast, has been starving for attention and respect these last couple of years, and they're getting a big chunk of that tonight. And deservedly so. Eight and three last season, eight and three this year. And their second team defense is in now and continuing where the first team had left off. Southern Mississippi, one of 13 Division 1A teams to have won eight games at least in the last two seasons. That puts you among an elite group. Boy, on a night like this, it was Latrell Pollard, 21. On a night like this, yeah. The mastermind of that ice bath that Jeff Bauer will probably take. Hofford to catch, out of bounds at the 41. Yeah, I wonder if coaches don't start to think about that ice bath, you know, the Gatorade bath that they get when they win. I mean, you see it all the time. You got to figure that maybe he'd start thinking that somebody is up to something and he might kind of get suspicious. Just don't turn your back on the sideline. Yeah. But see, he's still coaching. He's still coaching. He's not thinking about this game being over yet. Lytle's throw to Barlow. He's out to the 48-yard line. So Pittsburgh season will end at six and six. And coach has gotten wet. Although that's a that's a that's a team that loves their coach. They throw water on him and they say, here coach, here's a coat. Well here it was. This is how they got him. Good teamwork here. <laughs> there you go. You gotta follow it with the coat. That's a nice touch. Yeah. Here, here's another angle on this one. Oh man. <laughs> Sports Center coming up. We'll take you to the Rose Bowl. We'll take you out to the Orange Bowl. We'll show you Marv Levy. In fact, when you get to the Orange Bowl, you'll probably see Sean Salisbury, a guy that was part of our crew throughout the year, along with our producer, Brian Carter, our director, John Del Vecchio, Tony Britt, our statistician. Ryan Church, our spotter today. Into the end zone and incomplete. Chris Marlowe doing a fine job on the sideline, still waiting for Rod's hat. He's got to go a long way across country to get that hat. Hey, happy new year to you, buddy. It's been a fun year. We're not there yet. We're but getting close. We're almost there. Not a bad place to be on New Year's Eve. Memphis, Tennessee.
Lytle's throw is incomplete. And it will bring up third down. A big day in college football tomorrow. All right, before we leave the air, I've got to get your picks. Who do you like in the Rose Bowl? Well, I got to tell you, I, I think that's going to be a great matchup. I love Ron, uh, Woodson. Chuck Woodson, love what he does. But I got to believe that Mike Price has done a great job. I wouldn't be surprised to see Washington State knock off Michigan. Well, what do you think? I would not be surprised as well. I think Washington State, everyone thinks they've overachieved this year, but they've had a fabulous year. They have a pretty good defense themselves. Tomorrow, we talked about the Rose Bowl. There's other games going on, and we hope that you'll get your wake-up call early right here on ESPN, 11 a.m. Set your watches accordingly. The Badgers of Wisconsin, the Bulldogs of Georgia, and then Thursday night, the Sugar Bowl on ABC, Florida State, and Ohio State. It's like the best day of the year. Just get the remote there, you know, have some food and watch college football all day. That's how the song goes, the most wonderful time of the year. Clock continues to run. You can see the wife of Jeff Bauer, Debbie. Half a minute left in this season, and it's incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. One can only imagine what must be going through Jeff Bauer's mind. He said his wife. His other daughter, Stephanie, and the entire program at Southern Miss. The biggest reason why, here's his daughter, Stephanie. He called for her a few moments ago. You might have heard that. He wanted to have her with him to celebrate this victory and share this moment. Incomplete. <laughs> short of the first down and Southern Miss will get the football and this Liberty Bowl is over. Southern Miss 41 pit seven for Chris Marlowe and Rod Gilmore. I'm Rich Waltz. This has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports. Kristen Bauer your daddy got to Memphis.